Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to bring to you the 2010 Essen release game by White Goblin Games called Con. Con is a two to four player game. It takes about 60 minutes to complete. Its basic gameplay mechanics revolve around area control, area influence, and some light hand management. Now, in Khan, each of the players is going to take on the role of a general during the 13th century Mongol Empire, which was one of the largest continuous empires in the history of the world. Now, in the game, you will be trying to take over and control area within the game and try to drive out the eight current leaders. And the player at the end of the game who has controlled the largest number of areas and the largest number of victory points will be named the new Great Khan. So let's go ahead and open up the box and take a look inside. First thing inside that we're going to take a look at is the rule book. And it is a four page, eight and a half by eleven rule book and very easy to understand the rules. Don't let its shortness um, detract you from buying the game. There's quite a bit of strategy inside the game which you start playing. Plays a lot better with four players than with two players. There are four different rule books for the four different languages that it ships with at Essen. There is a very nice um, map that's got some artwork in here that's very typical of the time. It looks kind of like a mix of Asian Japanese art on it. Now I also have the four Essen 2010 um, special uh, yurts that ship with the game. These are golden yurts um, that players will be getting when they buy the game at Essen 2010. There is a stack of cards and within the cards you're going to have all the different leaders with the different uh, terrains behind them. Now each of the leaders has their own color coordinated area on them. There's also some special cards that players will be using through the course of the game. The cards are on some very nice uh, pseudo thick um, cardstock. Some really neat artwork on them. Um, nothing to complain about at all with the cards. You can sleeve them or not either way. They're, they should be fairly durable. There is a bag of different uh, conquer tiles. These conquer tiles come in two different forms. There are land conquer tiles which have numbers on them and then there are bridge conquer tiles that have numbers on them. And the designation between them is the wood grain versus the, um, the look of the bridge grain. And all of them have different uh, Tetris sized shapes and pieces. So we'll get into that in just a little bit. Being a four player game, there's four different colors. There are 40 of these yurts, and I'll be using the word yurts quite a bit. Yurts is basically just a hut, as you can see there, um, that represents an area that you control on the board. And there are neutral yurts, which come in denominations of 60 total here, and these are used for the neutral generals that you're trying to overthrow in the game. And the last thing are the eight different colored generals or leaders in the game. Now these are designated for the players that are playing, but they're designated for the pre-generated generals um, that are already inhabiting the territories that you will be trying to control. So let's go ahead and set up just a simple two-player game and start explaining the game to you. Now I've gone ahead and set up a two-player game. I just wanted to make a quick reference that the rules will change with three and four players. All those rules of which revolve around both the number of cards or special cards each player starts off with as well as the utility or uses for those special color cards which will change in a three and four player game. Now let's go ahead and walk through the components one more time and give everybody an understanding of what the game ships with and then I'll start explaining the gameplay. So we're going to start off with the board first and around the board you're going to see a couple areas for neutral yurts. So these are the black yurts that uh, pertain to the eight leaders that start off. Now these aren't cards, they're actually printed onto the board here. Each of the leaders is going to start with their own five yurts placed in front of them. Again, yurts are like little camp encampments for the characters. Um, all these have different nationalities and I'm not sure what all of them are, but um, there's some Arabic and some Chinese and some Russian leaders and it's not really pertinent. But they are color coordinated, which is important. If you look down at the board, the board has several locations with people on them and that's where these leaders will start. Now all the leaders um, can start in, in different areas depending on 
how the player sets up the game. Just note that they need to start on these uh, specific areas. And all the callers refer back to one specific leader. So brown refers to brown and pink refers to pink. So the board though is broken into several different territories and you see areas like um, the tundra up here and the mountain region up here and the sandy desert right here. There's a river that breaks it up. Uh, there's a forest over here and then the outside areas are called surrounding areas which you can't move in. You can only physically move in these areas that have grids on them. There's an area over here for the draw deck and the discard deck and let's go ahead and start looking at the tiles now. It looks very much like a Tetris game and these are called the Conquer Tiles and they come in two different uh, varieties. There are Conquer Tiles that are used on land and Conquer Tiles that are used over um, rivers or these are called bridges. Now some of them come in uh, a couple different denominations such as these. There's three or four of these smaller tiles. Um, there's four of these um, two point tiles. But there's a lot of them that only come with one specific one. Um, and these will be contended uh, with throughout the game trying to use specific tiles to conquer specific areas. There are special cards. The special cards refer to specific actions in a two player game. Each player is going to start with two of the same. In a four player game, each player is going to start with just one of these. They're one time use cards. Once you use them, they're gone for the rest of the game. The cards um, are specific to the generals. So if you look on here, they match the same flags and pictures of the generals on the board. Now, it uh, needs to be noted that for each of these generals, there's nine specific cards. So for each of them, you're going to run through nine different cards. And they have their colors on the bottom right, as well as an icon or a compass right there. You can see um, that shows southwest on this one and north on this one. And that's very important. Um, as we get into the game. Each of the players starts with 40 of their yurts, which are again these little huts, and they will be placed onto the board to control specific regions. So those are the components. Let's go ahead and start explaining the gameplay. Now I previously showed you how to set up the game um, just a little bit earlier, but we're going to walk through some really quick things. Um, each player is going to start off with four cards off the top of the draw deck. Um, they're going to start with their special cards depending upon how many players are playing. Since we're playing with two players, each player starts with two of each of the special cards face up on the board. And all the leaders are placed onto their designated areas onto the board. So the very first thing that happens in a player turn is they're going to take the top card of the draw deck and place it face up and do whatever it says on there. So I've already done that and it shows the Caliph of Baghdad. They're going to move the brown player one spot or the brown leader one spot. So we look on the board and find the brown leader and we move him one spot. Well, Which way do we move him? We move him east according to the compass in the lower right hand corner. So you take him and you move him east and you take one of the black yurts that is in front of him and place it in the place he just moved from. That simple. Um, whenever a player runs out of yurts in front of them you simply put him back onto his card tile. Once there are five of these on the um, on their leader area, the game will end. So if the brown is on his spot and then there's four other leaders on their spots, the game will end. The very next thing that happens is the player who just did that will um, do one of three different actions. They can invade, they can drive out another ruler, or they can conquer. And then they can do a different kind of invade, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. So invading, the first thing they can do is they can look through their... Um, starting hand and choose one of their cards. So for instance they choose this card and it shows a green forest background. So they can expend this card, throw it in the discard pile and place one of their yurts anywhere in the green area saying that they control that area. That's one of the actions they can do. They can drive out another leader. They just simply pick one of the leaders they want to drive out and they say I'm going to drive out green they take the top card off the deck, they ignore everything but the movement. So they look at the movement and they move him southwest. So they take green and they move him southwest, one space, and they take the green marker. So we'll find green and take his chip and move it right there onto the spot that he just moved from, saying that that's the neutral location he moved from. So that's the second action he can take, or he can conquer. 
Conquering is where you get points. Now, conquering is um, simply taking one of these tiles that you wish to use and laying it on the board. Here's where um, the strategy comes into play. It has to be a majority of tokens that you own. So say, for instance, you, over the course of the game, own these three tokens, and you have the majority in that row. You can conquer this area, simply laying that tile over top of those three, and it has to match up perfectly with the shapes. You can also own areas over neutral. So you own the majority, and neutral simply do not count. So if that is the case, you would still own that area, and you take your yurt and you place one on top, simply stating that you own that territory. If there is a contention between players, such as this, you can still own this area. And this is one of the strategies in the game, is to try to cover up your opponent's areas um, by building into their area and then taking away some of their tokens by building over. And the reason why you can do that there is because you own the majority. If there is ever an even number, players can agree and say, listen, I want to build this on this area. We both have a majority. Neutral tokens don't count. Would you like to do that? And the yellow player can agree, so they would both take one of their tokens and say that they both have the majority and they own that area. The point values are in the center, so when the game ends, they will be adding up their point values on those cards. The fourth action you can take in the game will actually end your turn immediately. If you really want to invade an area and you don't have a card that will work for you, say for instance, you don't want to build in this area. You can actually forego playing a card and simply take one of your yurts and place it anywhere on the board. That will take up both of your two actions for that turn. The game goes back and forth until, as I previously mentioned, all our five of the eight leaders are um, have used up all of their neutral yurts and are back onto their areas on the board. When that happens, the game will end, and players simply add up um, the number of points that they have for their uh, conquered areas. There is also a point system for whoever has the largest contiguous areas, and those points are added in, and then the game ends. Um, special cards that can be used, there's uh, four on each side. This card here will allow you to take, instead of two actions every turn, it will allow you to take three actions. When you use one of these, you simply place a yurt on it, and then during one part of your turn, once you've used it, this card will go back in the box and not be used again. There is an action here that it will allow you to um, deny the other player for a turn from building over neutral yurts. So if you want to build over a neutral yurt, um, but you know your opponent may be able to slip a tile in there before you, you can place one of yours on here and simply deny them for one turn so that maybe you could do it the next turn. This one allows you to save a tile for one turn. If you know that in your next turn you're going to be able to build one of these large tiles, say for instance the six pointer here, but you know your opponent could use it, you can put your yurt on that special card and place one on this and simply say that is reserved for me until the next turn. And the last one allows you to protect your yurts from being built over. And again, that's part of the opposing player um, impeding on your areas and using your yurts to build as well. The game is actually, it's, it's not the most interesting board to look at, and that's the only problem I have with the game. It's not visually interesting to me. But the game mechanically is wonderful. There's a lot of really cool strategies. The Tetris pieces may throw people off, and the theme doesn't really totally fit with the game. This could actually be any style of game, and it would still work, because the conquering and the invading don't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't really feel like a war game. It's more of a strategic placement area control game, and that's, that's fine with me, because, as I said, the game really works. It really makes sense. It's very, very, very easy to teach and very easy to play. Uh, it plays a lot better with four players, in my opinion, than it does with two players. It becomes uh, quite a bit lopsided with two players. Um, but with three and four players, it's a really fantastic area control game. Very easy to understand, very quick to play. It takes about 60 minutes. Um, we played a game last night that took about 40 minutes. And, uh, it, it's just very simple, very elegant in its design, and it's one that I would really suggest um, at least giving it a shot. And that is Khan, and thanks again for watching.